Hello, time for lunchtime edition of Mornings with Stanley. I just couldn't get myself up this morning. I don't know what's up with that with me. <coughs> I was taking someone to give me some melatonin to help me sleep, <coughs> and it works, but I couldn't get up in the morning, so I stopped taking it a few days ago. <coughs> now I'm waking up in the middle of the night again, and then when I finally fall back to sleep, I don't want to get up. So we didn't get our walk in this morning. And so I'm doing this at lunchtime. But hey, it's good. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. 72 degrees today. Tomorrow I'm getting my first shot. I'm excited about that. Brenda, church business administrator, got hers yesterday. And she she had COVID. Like from, <coughs> I guess it was in, she got it, I guess, Christmas Day. So, um, which her son-in-law got it first and, um, several people in her family got it. So she was out for two weeks after Christmas, almost three weeks, I guess. Anyway, so she's, she's having reaction to it. She says mostly just really exhausted. <laughs> she's exhausted today she doesn't, and she has a little bit of nausea, but she's going home after lunch. So I have to be back in the office. Right on time today. I'm usually good at getting back to work pretty close to me on time after lunch. I'm late every morning, but I work after. I work all the time in the evening and on weekends. Anyway, Stanley's here. He he was in his cage when I got home. He didn't come out and greet me. Lucy was out. She was so excited to see me. Stanley didn't even act like he cared. <laughs> I came home. He just stayed in his cage. And I went and prepared my lunch. Today I'm having Brunswick stew. Brunswick stew is a big thing in Virginia. Like we have chili. The church I served in in Richmond, Central Baptist Church there as a as a college and career minister and singles minister um, they had this big <coughs> Brunswick stew thing every year just like we have chili cook-off at St. Mark <coughs> and um, anyway it's a big thing it's like a chicken this is a pork but in there it was always chicken stew it's good not quite chili <laughs> But I'm from Texas. And um, so I'm having that today. So it remind me of my Virginia days. I had a good time in Virginia. I loved Virginia. Richmond is a great city. Um, of course, I went to seminary there. I lived there four years, three years in seminary. Then I went to New Jersey for a year to go to school at Drew. And then came back to, to Virginia for a year before I ended up coming back to Texas. And I loved Richmond. I never really thought I'd leave Richmond I mean, I, I would have stayed there forever, but I, I left. I don't know if I'll ever make it back. <laughs> I'm liking Texas okay. We've got good Mexican food. They do have a Chewy's now in Richmond, so if I had to go back, I could survive. I could survive very well in Richmond now with a Chewy's. But anyway, I guess I'll put Stanley... Why this tail is blocking my view. Your your view of me. I guess I'll put him out in the hallway. And we'll get on our lesson today. I hope he's feeling okay. I'm a little worried about him because he's usually just really raring to go all the time. We did get a good walk in yesterday. I was halfway down the street and we didn't get very far before Stanley decided to do his business. And as I picked up the, um, well, his stuff, um, I looked down on my feet and I was wearing one brown shoe and one black shoe. I felt really stupid. I wasn't about to go home and change because we had just started our walk. So I did my whole walk with one black shoe and one brown shoe. I, anyway. I don't know why I tell everybody all my <laughs> my secrets. No one would have known. I when I was late, when I left yesterday for um, the walk first time. Um, Bill Cole, church member, was out front because he's 
um, looking at the one of the shutters on the par parsonage there's some slats that are have broken off I'm not sure how that happened but um, it's been that way for a while and they want to replace it and then you want to look in the garage at a hot water heater because <clears throat> it needs to be changed and there's this it's on this wooden platform and that needs to be changed too because it's all rotted and then the, the furnace is right there we're trying to figure out how we can get the water heater taken out the floor the platform rebuilt without having to move the furnace out as well and the furnace is old as also but we really don't want to spend all that money at once so anyway so he didn't notice my shoes for the wrong color because he came to the office today and I asked him if he noticed it. But anyway. <clears throat> I know that none of y'all are surprised that I would do that something like that. Here's our reading for today. Um, the new life in Christ is what it is. It's Romans chapter. 12 verses 1 and 2, chapter 12 of Romans. I think it's a powerful, powerful chapter. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sac sacrifice, holy and acceptable, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable. And perfect. You know, I don't, the renewing of your minds, that reminds me, I, I'm not sure what the, the Greek words are there. I could look it up, but um, the whole idea of meta, of repentance in the Gospels, it's when Jesus says, the word there is metanoia. And metanoia is kind of like a renewing of your mind. Um, it's not just about changing behavior. It's about changing your understanding, which the change in behavior comes out of your change of understanding. And anyway, so <clears throat> I'll shut up. Word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Now on to Christian Maturity by E. Stanley Jones. We are in week 44. This is Wednesday of week 44. So that means we just, um, we're getting close to the end of this. I'm not sure if I'll continue with Mornings with Stanley after this is over with, since we're probably be close to getting back into worship more. Though I'm a little worried about the mask mandate, the government governor's announcement yesterday. You know, uh, I think that it's, it's we're all going to be feeling more comfortable, especially as more and more people get vaccinated. But. Uh, I just wonder if it was too soon to just say, let's just open everything back up. We'll see, the church, the bishop kind of said, let's, you know, it's up to you. You can do what you want, but he advises us to continue to, to wear a mask and social, socially distance, be socially distant. And we're, that's what, how we're going to do it, at least for the time being. So anyway, here's our reading for today. Align our wills to the will of God. Prayer aligns our wills to the will of God. As a friend and I were, were motoring along, we saw that the car ahead of us had a wheel out of alignment. My friend observed, that tire is doomed to half a life unless it is realigned. But look at lives doomed to half a life because they are out of alignment to the will of God. Recently, I went to see an old man who was radiant and happy and keen at 91. On the table lay a book a bookmark which read, He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The man was ageless and deathless and was looked on as, a Christ, as Christian number one in that city. On the same day, I saw a woman of 81 who had lived a base life and who kept saying, I'm damned, I know I'm damned, and God doesn't hear my prayers. Every day for six months, I prayed that God would send me a letter from my son, but no letter, God has deserted me. She was expecting a miracle without aligning her life to the will of God. You pray with your life and not merely with your lips. God hears you instead of what you say. God hears you instead of what you say. The you has italics there. Prayer organizes thought and life around the will of God. A man said to Whistler, 
I don't seem to be able to fit this picture of yours into this room. And the painter replied, you were begun at the wrong end. You must fit the room into the picture. Prayer organizes life around the picture of God, who is Jesus. In prayer, that one face, far from vanished, rather grows, or decomposes but to recompose, become my universe that feels and knows. We see everything from a standpoint, that standpoint, Jesus. When Jesus touched a blind man's eyes and asked him if he saw, he replied, I see men like trees walking. His sight was out of focus. Jesus touched him again and the man saw, saw all things and all men plainly. Unless we learn to surrender in prayer, all things are out of focus. The big seems little and the little seems big. Prayer puts everything in focus and the supreme value stands out. Jesus only. Here is our, our prayer for today. Oh Jesus, you are the value of all my values. Without you, there is nothing valuable. Everything turns to dust and ashes without you. With you, everything takes on significance. Everything becomes big with meaning and destiny. I thank you. Amen. And our affirmation for the day. In prayer, I do not overcome God's reluctance, but lay hold on his highest willingness. Jesus is Lord.